Welcome back, all Des from Model Railway Technique here. So up this week, there's something in the model railway industry I don't think has been done before. So what I'm looking at doing is how home automation might come into the model train world and sort of collide together. So I'm one of these people that's always looking at how I can bring other sort of products and other bits and bobs into to my trains and my model railroading. Big shout out to all my Patreons out there. Every little bit counts. Uh, I'll put a link to that below. Do not forget to subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. Let's get going. So what is home automation? If you've never heard of that term before. So home automation is building automation for the home. It's also, you may have heard it under another different names, maybe smart home or smart house. Uh, home automation home automation system will control and or monitor such attributes or what they call entities in my world uh, such as lighting climate control entertainment systems and appliances to name to name a few it may also include some home security which is what i'm going to get into a little bit later probably within my own home and also within uh, my layout room which is detached from the home um, which will control and access um, home security um, I've also gone one step further within my home. It's I've also connected it to the internet via some for, port forwarding. And this is obviously when we start getting into the IoT, uh, the internet of things like Hans Tanner is getting into. So home automation typically connects to some sort of hub. So there's der various different versions of it. So this is a, a protocol called Zigbee, which is a Wi-Fi type hub, and it operates on the 2.4 gigahertz. Also, I've also got products out there or products in my home and also within my train shed that are full Wi-Fi. So for normally for, to get this to work, you will need either a Wi-Fi hub, uh, a Wi-Fi router, any sort of particular Wi-Fi router, like what you've got in your home will be fine. So at this point, you're probably asking, why am I going to all this trouble? I'll show you a little video a little bit of tongue in cheek. One, this is one of the main reasons why I set up the smart switches in my layout room. Just a few words from our sponsor, PCB Way. Without them, these videos wouldn't be possible. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCB Way, or you are seriously missing out. PCB Way don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. I'm just going to do some very basic automation within my train room, just using an app on my mobile phone and some various other bits and bobs that I'll walk you through. Now, home automation, the sky is really the limit on what you want to control and the types of devices. And I will go through some of the devices quickly where what I've used in my layout room and also within my home. Now, some of the, the hardware that I'm using is reasonably inexpensive. I can You can buy it online, but I buy it from a, a local chain here in Australia called Bunnings. So this is an Arlec brand. There are numerous other brands out there. And these are all plug and play type devices. So this is a, a four ganged power board. So this particular, or well, this type of power board is, you can only control with one switch. So but what I mean by that is whatever you plug into any of those four outlets is controlled. So it's either on or off. There are other versions of the power board. So one like this. So this is a five outlet power board. The one on this where my finger is here, that is not controlled by Wi-Fi. But the rest of these all through here are individually controlled. So basically when you set it up in the application, it gives you four separate buttons. And I'll show you that um, very shortly on, on the application. So you can have, say, this 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 one on here but not having anything else on so that's actually quite handy um, with a, a five outlet or smart board so other types of devices you might say is some smart globes so they're they're wi-fi based 
So same sort of thing, you put them into a pairing mode and you access them via the application. So that's also an RGB. So what you can do, you can play with dimming and also the, the color grade on it as well. This little device here has actually got nothing on the front of it. So this is a Zigbee based device, which I talked about before. All the others are Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a temperature and humidity sensor. So what people are using these for is obviously if it gets their, their houses are getting to a certain temperature or to a certain humidity, their air conditioning's turn on. So I could see this being very, very handy. And I'm going to put one in my layout room um, in due course. So when the humidity gets to a certain temperature, it'll turn on a dehumidifier. And I must point out these types of devices are all battery powered. So they are run by these little button batteries and they they so far I've had this running for several months and haven't hasn't even registered that it's gone down in battery power as yet. So they're very very low latency and very low battery consumption. Continue on with smart socket. So this one here is a single smart socket. This one also is a, has an energy meter in it, so it obviously feeds back how much energy in kilowatts that uh, that that particular appliance is running. And also another Zigbee device. This is a an IKEA push button, which has five different functions on it. So you've got an on. You've got a brightness up and down and um, some accessories, but you can actually reprogram these to turn on and off pretty, uh, pretty well, whatever, anything you want. So to give you some sort of idea, oh, my sort of lights above me here, I'll just go there or on a Zigbee, and you can see I'm pushing that, that down, or I can turn them right off and go back up. Like so, and that's all run by. So that's all run by my Zigbee hub, which is probably 15, 15 meters away from me in another part of the house. So back out of the layout room, this is my Belair yard. I'm just setting up for an op session there. You can see there's the app that I've got up running there. So you can see I'm just toggling the the Belair yard lights just on and off. Well, just a simple click of the button. No need to climb in under the layout like I did before and bash my head on the on the board work. And here's another one of the automations. This is my workbench, my very dirty workbench there that uh, this particular automation controls the lights. Time's exactly the same thing. I've got a separate button that turns this light on and also my harbour light, which is just around to the left of screen there. So it's just easy. Just turn it on and off. Now this next one I find quite handy. So that's my Roco Z21 command station there tucked in under there in the dark. Sorry about the quality of the footage now. The reason I did this is now I can just turn on individual sections, so to speak. So this one is in its, on its own. So what it is, it's on its own switch. And what I mean by that, this is the application here. So that's just one of the individual slips. So we'll go and have a look at the, the application in a sec. So the reason I set it up like that is, is sometimes I just want layout lighting in which is i showed you like the belay yard lights i've also got one for another whole area called barham and also i just don't want to when i turn the the power switch i don't want the dcc coming on the reason i don't want that is is because i don't want track power running at that point in time i just like it totally isolated out and not having that circuitry on at all so so what you're looking at here is the mobile phone app interface for grid connect so the all the different brands out there uh, depending on what ones you go for, uh, they're all very similar in their in their in the UI or the user interface. So I'll just talk you through a few things. So this is currently all the devices now. I haven't really gone through and set a lot of this up. I've done more in my home, that type of home automation. After you've sort of set it up uh, or set some devices up, you can see that I've got my lights that I showed you out in the layout room before. Uh, the, the second row in the middle, which is the Belair yard lights. So you can just imagine, as you're toggling that on and off, that is turning the lights on and off. So you can actually change the type of switch also that you wanna, that you may want to use with it. And you can obviously change the names or anything you want to be depending on where in the layout you have it. So my understanding, it's an application for both Apple and Android. I you can put it on tablets and also iPads as well. So then a beautiful little 
feature within this app in particular and they're all pretty similar you got scenes so I've got one called active layout so I can go through and I can group like devices together so active layout for me is pretty well turning everything turning all the lights on all the powerpoints and the DCC and it's active on on and off and then I can do turn the lights uh, a scene to turn all the lights off so at this point in time I've got three different areas for lights um, that over that sit under the, va the valance in the, the actual layout so another one I will look at wiring up at some stage will be just fully accessories so that'll turn all your accessories like signals and turnouts on so if I need to, to test any of that that side of the things so moving forward what I'll also look at doing is the actual room lights I'll look at automating those so the way I can do that is I can use a an actual 240 volt switch now in my part of the world the 240 volt switches you need to have wired by a qualified electrician so if you're in Australia please don't wire them yourselves other parts of the world have different laws and bylaws so abide by whatever law is in your particular your country or province so what we're going to look at doing now is I'll show you how you pair a device so Different brands have different way of pairing, so it's just a matter of reading the, the instruction manual. So we'll look at doing this little guy, this little one circuit, uh, one socket, 240 volt switch. This one that I talked about before has also got, um, it shows you how much power each, shows you how much power that each um, individual thing that's plugged into it is actually using so this one has got the pairing button on the top so once you plug that into 240 volts you hold that down for a few seconds and it starts flashing red so we'll go over and do that and i'll bring the app up and i'll show you what you need to do so we've we've now got the application up um with this like a screen mirroring program on my pc so you'll look at the bottom right hand corner here's this little plus sign so we go on plus or add the the item so because it's in pairing mode it's come up pretty well straight away go to add so we'll just push this button here and then you can see that's the the model or the type of item there so it's just a matter of you go to the the plus sign up the top here and it's going to ask what sort of wi-fi so as i said these at this point in time can only work on the 2.4 gigahertz so it's now on obviously the name of my my Wi-Fi and we go confirm that and you can see that it's going to go and connect that particular item to the Wi-Fi and depending on how quick your internet is depending how long this takes so my kids must be streaming something right now so mine's taking a little bit of time so we'll insert some intermission music <laughs> So once we've it's finished pair in pairing mode, it sort of counts down to 100, and then it goes over, and you'll see it pops out in all devices here. So now we can now go and change that name. So I'm actually going to go and click on it, and that brings up that phone like there, or sorry, that view I should say. So there's a little pen just underneath the uh, the main switch. So this is going to be controlling power to my Alpine region so i'm actually going to name it alpine power and i'll just drag this up a little bit further and you can see down the bottom here the current voltage going into it, it's 243.9 it's not actually got anything plugged into it and the power output um, wattage is not anything either. And this is the, the total history in kilowatt hours in the middle here. If you had something plugged into it, you have it like a little graph there for you. And you can now see we're out with, uh, with the name of Alpine Power. So this does have other things that it can be controlled by, third-party controllers like Amazon Alexa and also Google Home so you can actually do voice activated with this as well if you want to get into that side of things I've yet to do a lot of that in the layout room I haven't done anything in that layout room um, but I'm sort of delving into that in my home environment that's the end of the video so that's a little bit of a recap we've looked at home automation smart home type uh, equipment that we can use in the train shed probably agree it's not totally smart at this point in time because what it is still requires you to push an application a button on application so what's the difference between that and wiring another switch so 
my train shed had all the 240 volt switches that you plug all your componentry into around the outside of the shed, which is underneath the bench. So it wasn't well thought out when I initially built the, the layout. So if you haven't done that, well, you probably don't need this, this type of system, but it's something like you that you can retrofit. Um, it's all plug and play. You can then set up the way you want to. Now, moving forward, what I will look at doing is temperature with humidity and temperature gauges with a dehumidifier and maybe the air conditioning when I'm out working in there. I'll probably look at using some other reed top switches or contact switches, which uh, uses magnets to sense if a door's been opened or closed. So that's probably the way my main layout lights will come on or the main room lights will come on. You open up the door to the layout room and the lights will automatically turn on. Or there's another way you can do it. You can also do PIR sensors or movement sensors. That's a, another way you could look at doing it. You can possibly even look at doing that is if you want lighting underneath your bench when you're doing lighting. So you might need lighting underneath your bench when you're doing any work under there, like wiring and the light. You could use a PIR motion sensor that turns the lights on straight away when you go underneath the underneath the bench. So that that's pretty cool. So the, the sky's the limit with this stuff, guys and girls out there. So please comment below if the sort of thing that you might look at using in your layout or in your layout room or even in your home because obviously I'm trying to work out how I'm going to use it in my home and also out in the layout room so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time make sure you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on facebook and instagram at model railroad technique Don't forget, do not forget, don't, don't forget, don't, do not forget to, do not forget to subscribe, do not forget, do not forget to, do not forget to subscribe, click, do not forget to subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. Let's get going.